Hello lovely people of YouTube, how are we doing and happy Halloween. Right, my name's Danny, this is Crafty D Sculpts and in this week's video we're doing Halloween themed minions. We've got all three of the minions coming up and each one is going to look slightly different. So sit back and enjoy this video. Didn't know if we was going to get this one out in time. I've had a really hectic month this month. We've had two losses in the family and one of which was my very loyal best friend, my German Shepherd. So yeah, very sad times this month. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video, shall we? Hope you enjoy. And if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button for me. Thank you very much. And we're back and we are starting off with the armature as usual and we're not going to be using armature wire on this one We're jumping straight in with a tin foil So as you can see there we are scrunching up some balls of tin foil Aluminium foil, aluminium foil, whichever way you want to say it And we have got three different sizes there which we will be scrunching up a little bit more foil around in a moment but for now we're just trying to figure out our shapes and sizes there we go that's what we have at the moment for our three different minions right we are going to be using super sculpey for the majority of this one we will be using some cos clay but first of all let's open up a packet of this let's cut it in half because each one of these is going to be using at least half a packet to start off with condition that up Flatten it out, and we can get our tin foil and whack it in the middle. Now we're just going to haphazardly wrap it around and just find our general shape. There we go, swooshing and pulling and rolling and everything else that we can do. We're just going to stab a few holes into it to get all the air out from underneath because we want to try and minimise the amount of cracking even though it doesn't really matter how much cracking we get at the moment but there you go, we've got our three cylinders there they've just come out of the oven and as you can see there's a couple of little cracks that have appeared but we're going to cover them up by using some liquid clay get that all smooshed in there here we go, get the old paintbrush out before we get another layer of clay over the top we just roll that out in the pasta machine and we're just going to smush that in there we go, right, happy days now we've done that we can start working out where the overalls are going to go so I'm just using his body for reference to cut out the general shape we're going to offer that up into position try and find where the back of the overalls go and cut out the extra sections that we don't need one and two happy days, there we go right now we can smash everything together and cut all the rest off that we don't need once we've cut that off we can start pushing all that in and making it the bottom part of his overalls now that's all nicely smushed in we can make the pockets so we're just going to cut a oval shape out or semicircle shall we say and we're just going to slightly indent some stitching before carving out these um, side pockets as simple as that I'm literally doing the indentation and that's about it alright I've got an old pair of jeans that no longer fit because I'm a fat sod and we are going to just push that in just to give a tiny amount of detail there we go right, now we've done that to all three of them and they've been baked again we can start doing some extra bits like putting in some legs so we've got our drill and I think it's about a 3mm drill piece we've been using on this one and we're just going to drill out where the legs are going to go going to do that to all three of them before getting the armature wire out and some clippers and cutting some of our armature wire down to size and 
before inserting it into place. Here we go, he's got some metal legs now. Right now we can now we've done that we can actually get him into a bit of wood and we can start giving him some feet. You've all seen me do feet before so I'm not gonna to go too far into it but we'll get them into place and we get them all shaped up. And if you want a more detailed video of how I do shoes and feet and everything else like that, just leave us a comment below. Right now we've got his feet into place, we're just gonna get the bottom part of his trousers in. Now we started off with the ankles, just wrapping a thin bit of clay around before putting in a bit of a ball of a clay and then getting all that smushed in into the shape that we desire. Needs a bit of refining, but now onto the arms. Exactly the same process that we did for the legs. That's it, arms are in place. Now we've done that, we're going to get a little bit of floral wire and we're just going to wrap it around where the clay is going to be sitting on his arms. This just gives a little bit more stability and gives the clay something to grab onto. There we go, that's done now. Now we can get some clay onto his arms. So we're just going to roll out a sausage clay, measure out how much we need, make a slight incision into it so it just slides onto his arm a little bit easier, open it up, push the clay into place and smush it all together. Right, now we've done that we can now get the straps put onto his um, overalls. So again we're using a little bit of liquid clay first of all just to make sure everything sticks to the already baked body. Cut off what we don't need and get all that smushed in. Right, now we've done that we can add some buttons. And again just going to poke some holes where the holes should normally be. Right now this one is going to have like a pumpkin head so I've got these big fat sausages or fingers or whatever you want to call them of clay and we're just going to cut them to size and we're going to continue that all the way around his head. Just pushing them into place making sure they're sitting nicely and smoothing them in. So as you can see we've gone all the way around his head now and just getting the last one into place. Now once we've done that, we're going to get the back end of a paintbrush and we're just going to push the indentations in a little bit more and just make everything look a little bit more uniform. Right, now we've done that, we've got animals coming out of the cat flap, dog flap, whatever you want to call it. But now we've done that, we can cut them into eyes and we've just found this old bit of piping in the shed and we're just going to push them into place before scraping out the innards. There we go, we can finish all that off in a moment, just smush any last bits around before moving on to our next minion. And carving out a mouth. Now this one is going to be a vampire. I forget their names, the small ones Bob, Stu and Kevin, I think that's it in size order, so this one would be Stu, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, probably am. But yeah, we're just cutting in a mouth and we're going to add some teeth in in a moment. There we go, we've pre-baked some teeth and we're just going to push them into place. Some little vampire canines. 
before moving on to their goggles. Now for the goggles, I've got the metal pole again. I've wrapped it with some grease paper, grease paper, grease proof paper before going over with a pre-rolled out bit of clay that we put through the pasta machine. We've pre-baked that and we are using Cosclay for this one to have that little bit more flexible finish. And as you can see, we're just cutting off what we need for the actual goggles. Now we can just push that into place. Like so. Here we go. What do you think? Right now we've done that, we can just finish off the inside of the eye with a ball stylus. Just make sure that there's no gaps and it's all smoothed off. Right now we've done that, we've rolled out a very thin bit of clay, put it through the pasta machine, cut it down to shape and we are going to use it for the actual surround of the goggle before putting on the strap. Go as simple as that. Oh, I can get my hands out of the way. Right, now we're going to move on to the hands. Now we've just got a flat oval of clay and we're just going to make two incisions and then wind up the fingers with our finger and thumb. As he's only got three fingers on this, we're going to smush in the rest into his arm. Sorry, dog's running about as usual. And finish off his glove with that bit of clay there before moving on to his jacket. Now this jacket gave me some headaches. So we two or three attempts to try and figure out the way that we was going to do this. But I found this was the easiest way just by making the two incisions and sliding it over his arms. Finding where it meets in the middle and as you can see we are going to add one more little piece in which I forgot to press play for on the record. Or the record button shall I say. Play? That's the playback. But now we've got that done, we can finish off doing the goggles by putting the actual little screws or bolts around the edge. There we go, Stu's done, moving on to Kevin. Now Kevin is going to be Scream, or Ghostface. So we are just getting his goggles into place and then just whacking a load of clay in roughly how the face should look before we start refining it all so just building out the cheekbones almost underneath the eyes putting the large elongated mouth into place and then we can start messing around with that pushing and pulling cutting bits out where we don't need it adding bits where we do need it and getting that face how we like it pushing in a nose I don't forget this is more of a skeletal kind of a look so hence why the nose is being cut out like that marking out where the mouth's gonna be and then stripping back any material that we don't need before smoothing it off right, we're only gonna put a partial hood on this one rather than the full cloak There we go, that was simple enough. A lot easier than the coat on the other one. Right now we've got to have him have his knife, haven't we? So we're just gonna cut out a piece of clay like this. If I remember rightly, I did push a little bit of armature wire in there and smooth it off at the end. But yeah, there's the basic shape of what we need. And then just flattening down the bladed edge. Now we've done that, we're gonna use a little bit of liquid clay and just push it into his hand. So then when we bake it, it gets a nice bond. Right, now we've done that, we can move on to the base. Now I've pre-marked out where they're all going to be standing. Sorry, my dog is really on one today. So we've drilled them out. We've scored the edge of where we're going to put the clay. We're going to use a little bit more liquid clay and get all that smushed in. Unfortunately, my dog was asleep before I started recording the voiceover. And it's <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as I start the voiceover, all she does is run about, typically. 
Right, now we've done that, we can get a flat bit of clay and just smush it into place before using this tool just to give it a bit of a crazy paving look. There we go, just going all the way around haphazardly, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be in any specific shape, just freehand it and go with the flow. Looking good. Right, now we're using some of this modelling paste and I'm just going to put a thin layer over where the grass is going to be. Just makes it easier for me to paint and same for the actual grass to stick to. Right, now we're actually going to give this one a bit of a back fence. Uh, Fudge, come on, no place for you mate. So we're using this mitre bond. It's a two part, one's a spray and one's a glue. And it gives an instant bond. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a dab of this super glue right there. We're going to spray the other part which is going to stick down to it. And that will instantly bond. Luna thinks so too. Right, so now we've done that, we're going to do the opposite side. We're going to continue that pattern upwards. And then we're just going to continue doing that until we've got a fence. Now, as you can see, the fence is now done, and we're just going to score a load of scratches into the actual surface of the fence to give it that more woody look. All right, now that's done, we're going to bring back the mitre bond, and we're just going to attach that to the base. There we go, simple as that. Right, now we're going to make some extra pumpkins. So we've just pre-rolled out these balls of clay and we're just going to push in the top and the bottom with our finger and thumb. And then we're going to use a little bit of armature wire and we're just going to put these indentations from top to bottom all the way around the actual pumpkin. And there we go. Once we've done that, we can add a little stalk to the top. Before putting any detail in. Right, onto some paint. Now we're going to start off with a bit of ultramarine blue for the overalls. Before moving on to matte black for all the black areas, including the hood, the gloves, the eyes, well, say the eyes, the mouth, and the hands. We do do a dob of black in the eyes later, but for now, we're just going to get everything else done. Demonic yellow for the skin. We go around with all three of these in the same yellow. Before moving on to this lava orange for the pumpkin head. Now I did use a slightly lighter orange afterwards just to give some highlights onto this one and the other pumpkins. I'm going to use a night blue on Stu's jacket. On the outer part of the jacket we do another colour on the inner jacket. Now we use gun metal for the knife and the goggles. And this electric blue for the inside of Stu's coat. There we go. Right, onto the base now. Now we've just made this greeny brown colour and we're just going to lightly just smash this all into this grass area which we are going to be amending later. But for now we're just going to go over the path with this grey light grey should I say 
what I wanted to say before moving on to a black wash. Now we're just going to go over the whole area with this black wash. And once we've done that, we can then remove it with some paper towel. So there we go, we've got the paper towel out there and we're just going to dab the majority of that paint off just to give that sort of weathered look. There we go. Now we've got that done, we're just going to get some of this PVA basting glue, which is going to go over all the grass area. We're just going to put these pins in so we don't clog up the holes. And we're just going to smush all that in there. My dog is really on one today. Probably hear her walking around. Right, now I treated myself to one of these fake grass applicators. And we're all static grass applicators, and we're just gonna mix in a couple of different color grasses, mix them together with our fingers, put the lid back on, making sure that we've got a connection, and then getting our grass into place. Right now, while I was making this, the missus was outside preparing in the front of the house. So I quickly ran out and nicked some of this and thought I'd wrap it around the fence. And we get some fake spiders in there as well. And we're back to painting the eyes as we mentioned earlier. The ball stylus just dips it in some black paint and then we're just going to literally plonk them inside the eyes like that. Now I was going to add some colour into the middle of the eyes but being how hard it was to get in there we've just put the little white dots that you can see right there giving it more of a manga look. Right now onto his head we've just got some strands of this cotton and a little bit of UV glue just to get his eyes, uh, his hair in place before moving back onto his eyes and getting some UV resin and just filling in them areas. And this one is practically done. Really hope you enjoyed this one guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Give me some ideas for some new, new models. And yeah, we hope to see you very, very soon. But for now, let's get these last pumpkins into place before we move on to our glamour shots. Thanks for watching.